alive. It looks like we're alive. Good morning, good morning. Upstairs, it's more soup. I did soup last night. Soup this morning. Soup tonight. It's because of the Golden Week holidays, you know. Because the holiday is this week, it means the last couple of weeks my jobs in advance have been low. And I haven't been doing too much sizing the last few weeks because of so many printers being off this week. But of course, they're all back. They all want paper Thursday, not Thursday, they want paper this weekend, Friday or Saturday or Monday. So this weekend, it's my non-holiday getting the paper ready for them. Upstairs, I thought I'd put a new camera angle. You know, after I watched the other stream, John and I were up here together. And I realized after the fact, seeing it, that we really had screwed up the camera angle. So John sat there facing me with his back to the camera. And I turned out when I was doing my stuff, it, my arm was in the way and the camera couldn't even see the, the paper working. John's not here this morning. He's off. I think he's in Shikoku somewhere. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember his schedule. So I thought also I'd put the camera somewhere else so that it can see clearly what's going on. It can see the dip and it can see the stroke. And my arm will be here, but it shouldn't really bother the thing. I should have thought of this ages ago. Well, you guys should have been on it ages ago. Paper is out. Two packs of paper out. One for Sugasan, who we should see sometime soon coming up the stairs. And one for the lady we're calling Yuki-san. That's not her name. I don't know her name, actually, but Yuki-san will do for now. And I don't know what time she's coming. Prob probably not till nearly 10 o'clock. So I don't think we're going to see her this morning. Blame you guys. Why not? Why not? Why not? There's enough blame to go around for everybody. What's over my right shoulder on the shelf? You mean up there? Tons of stuff. I mean, what can I say? We hang our brush. We hang brushes up. We've got whatever. It's it's just stuff. That's our active paper stock. Our our archival, not archival, our bank, our paper bank is in the next room. All the crates that come from the paper maker, we keep an active open folder. The Takenaga large paper here, the old beetle paper here, and the Naninishiki paper here, which is what we'll be doing today. We keep it here, and when this gets low or out, we pull it from the over overstock. That's mulberry bark, which is just a bank. It's a bank of mulberry bark, gradually aging. It's probably going to get too old to use for real paper, but it will come in very handy when we start our paper making training. The size is made. I finished cooking it just a few minutes before the stream, and we're in our five-minute tunnel steeping, steeping. Right shoulder, shelf, shoulder, whatever. This is my left shoulder. <laughs> I don't know what this is like. <laughs> How many sheets today? We have 18 sheets of Nishiki paper cut in half. So I will have 36 sheets here, which means 72 strokes. So it's going to be a run for this. I do have uh, a show and tell ready. If we can get to it or not, I don't know, as usual. No guarantees up here. Did I have a swim this morning? No, it's a holiday. My ticket for the pool doesn't work on holidays. I just have a normal work day pass. The pool opens early on work days. It's not even open yet on holidays. So no, I have neither swum nor have I even washed my hair this morning. Sorry. It's a holiday in Japan. Boy, is it ever a holiday in Japan. You should have seen it outside. <laughs> it's just... I just got to get a little recording thing that just plays the same recording. It's insane here. It's insane.
I made three liters because it's going to do for this morning and tonight, but I'm not going to dump all three liters into the bin. If I do there, it just gets too deep and it's hard to control the brush. So I've dumped about half of it into the warmer. And partway along, if it gets a bit low, we'll have to recharge it. So. And the brush is hard. Give it a minute. Are we ready to go? Everything's prepped. Let's do this. Everything has been warming up for a couple of hours. I got up at 6 this morning, just two hours ago, came up here, uh, turned on the heater, turned on the hot table, got it all warmed up. Even though we're okay for temperature, I still want this stuff warm, warm, warm. We do wash the brush. What I do is, well, maybe we'll see it at the end. I don't know. Whatever. What can I say? I know it's full of glue, of course. I have next to the, I have, if I can do this without mucking stuff up. We have two trays here. The second tray is full of hot water. And once I'm done, once I'm ready to hang the paper, I dunk the brush quickly in the hot water for a few minutes. I can't leave it there because it will just absorb water and, and stretch up. But I rinse it, 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 after I've come back from the stream. I rinse it for a few minutes, rinse it, rinse it, run it under hot water, rinse it some more. We don't keep going till all the glue is out. It doesn't matter. That would just be too much damage for the brush. So I get most of the glue out, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, and hang it up in the fresh air. We don't try and get all the glue out. It would just be too much, you know, too much intensive damage on the brush. Although probably there are people who do. The same as with the printing brushes. There's sort of roughly two styles of thoughts on how to wash printing brushes. Printers who wash each one thoroughly till every last trace of the color is gone, and other people who just pretty much leave it. And rather than try and wash it out, you just use the same brush. The whole it's my pocket. It's just the pocket. My pants are okay. Just this, the, the pocket has given up. Don't sweat it. I've got lots of jeans. I'm okay for jeans. I've got jeans back up. Sadako gave me another pair. I have two unopened pairs of jeans. So don't sweat the jeans, please. It's a work day and I'm working work jeans. And it's just, it's just the pocket. My, my jeans are fine. My bum is not, is not showing. No shoes. Why would I have shoes on? There's no shoes upstairs here at all. You take your shoes off at the entrance to the second floor of this building. Everything is warm, warm, warm. Oh, I forgot one thing. Non skid. Are we ready? Someone said, did you get my email with the wood blocks? Blocks? Somebody sent an email yesterday. Oh, I see. This is the one where you're, you're part way along carving. 
yes, yes, I did get the email. Hang on a sec. Let's go, let's go. Yes, I did get the email. Not quite sure what to say about it. You're part way along with carving. It looks very nice, looks very presentable. I know what you should do, if you can put those images up somewhere where we can all see them on the Discord or somewhere, then we can pop it up and have a chat. It looks very like presentable work coming along. Okay, we got a fresh brush, dry brush, make sure we got glue all through it. Fluff, 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 fluff. This is why I didn't want too much liquid in here. I like to fluff this thing up, and if the thing is full of liquid, the brush is just going to get totally, absolutely. Okay, here we go. Knock it off, knock it off. Wipe it off, wipe it off, lightly wipe it off, bend it back. Hold it horizontally, and let's roll. Fluff, 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 off, off, knock it off, knock it off, a bit more, we're still a bit too wet, I saw from that first stroke. I think we are okay. The paper today is medium thickness, it's not super thin stuff. And it's a new batch of paper from Iwano-san. It arrived last week, about 10 days ago. I had been up to see Iwano-san a couple of months ago. You know about that. And I had not complained, but I had commented about the previous batch of paper that we received, which really I had felt was on the thin side. It was kind of super thin. And I showed him some samples of prints we had made from it and the trouble we were having because it was too thin. And with a fair amount of trepidation I asked him, can we have the next batch a bit thicker? And I had taken a sample, but my past history with them is when I say, can we have it thicker? They just overdo it and go bang, and it's way too thick. But this batch, I think, looks about right. This paper is going to become another batch of eight views of cats. This one is going to be Night Rain, the cat with the bonsai plant. Well, we got a good view then. The mix here today, uh, we've elevated it. I've been getting reports from some of the printers that the paper is starting to feather. We've been using, we were using 35 grams per liter up to a few weeks ago, can I don't remember when we switched. We moved it up to 40 grams per liter some time ago, a month or so ago, and some of the printers are reporting that the paper is starting to feather. And this is what we will get as the weather gets warmer and warmer and warmer towards the summer we have to increase the amount of glue in the mix. So because of those reports, I've upped the glue here. We're dealing with 45 grams per liter of water. I've got three liters today, and the mix is 45 grams of glue per liter, up from what we had before. 
And as per the discussion last week, when John was here, I have increased the alum percentage to 20% of the Nikawa by weight. So for every liter here, because there's 45 grams of glue, there's nine grams of alum in here. And I'm doing three liters, so it's 27 grams of alum. And that's a ton. I was really nervous on putting too much in there. And I'm eagerly awaiting feedback from this batch. I won't get any for nearly a week. This paper, some of this paper will be shipped out tomorrow. The printer will probably be starting over the weekend. If there's a problem, I'll hear about it right away. If there's no problem, I won't hear anything. Somebody from Scotland, ready to go to bed. It's late at night, isn't it? Yeah, the images you're showing about those blocks, I, I had a quick look the other night, I'm sorry, sorry I can't, I don't have it in front of me right now. They look nicely carved, I know obviously you still have to cut some wide spaces away, you can't print them the way they are, but it looks like a good start. going to confuse this question how much glue to put in the mix vis-a-vis -vis the seasons and the temperature is that we've thrown another factor into the mix here which is unfortunate the paper I was using up to the last couple of months has been you know last year's paper and in some case paper that arrived two years ago this is paper that arrived here as I said this week or about 10 days ago no not even that long ago so this paper hasn't even been alive for more than a couple of weeks they would have made it within the last two weeks. And we're really not supposed to do this. I know there's, there's lots and lots of different viewpoints on this. Iwano-san himself, the paper maker, he's not a printer, he's not a printmaker, he's a paper maker. And he feels, based on what he has heard over the years on feedback from people, he feels you should sit it for a year before using it. As to why, he just doesn't know or doesn't say. He just says it's better if you let it sit for a year or so. And we normally do just by the way the normal business works. We don't, it's not a just in time delivery where we get each sheet of paper ready for the prints. We've got a rolling stock here. We've got paper there from that we would have received about two years ago. So we've probably got about actually a two year supply. It normally comes in and we would use it one year or two years later, depending on the type. But this now, this is being used right straight after it's been made because that's going to match what we want right now as far as thickness. The stuff in storage is too thin. But that's throwing another variable into the mix about the sizing. This is fresh paper, not paper that has been sitting for a year or even two years. So how should that affect what I do today? Should I put a bit more glue in, a bit less? Should I smooth quicker, slower? I have no idea. Did somebody say when's the next YouTube video coming? <laughs> the 
next YouTube video is, I think it's going to be uh, not a dramatic production. It's going to be pretty short, maybe 15 <laughs> minutes, 15, 20 minutes. It's going to be a David's Choice video. We're going to look at some of the small, those actor prints that I got a few weeks ago. I think we're going to look at some of those. Amazon videos, my god, don't get her sidetracked. Maybe paper makers should age the paper themselves. No, 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 completely not possible. The paper makers are making stuff to order. We order, you know, 500 sheets of X size paper at a certain times of year. Bang, they make it and send it. There's no way they're going to age it. We can't, you know, we wouldn't want our order to come years later. We order it under our own requirements, of course. I don't know, it's not like we can't phone iwana -san, hi, 500 sheets of paper next Monday, please. He can't do that. We schedule it with him a year in advance. When I was there, was it February? I don't know. When I was there, I gave him my requirements for the next calendar year because he's got to know how much fiber to book from the farm. They've got to know in advance for a year how much to plant, trim, keep going. So we order at least a year in advance. Have we followed up on planting on our Yanosan's family farm? Nothing yet. No, of course. Just simply one data point came in. This is our spring rush. All of us, every single person in this operation right now is just ma massively busy trying to, trying to, to stay afloat. <coughs> so Yanosan's farm at the moment is simply just a data point. I'm sure next time she speaks to her, was it her grandfather? I can't remember. She's going to bring it up, we'll put the idea on the table, and we'll start mixing it into the thoughts. But uh, have I done anything yet? No. We are just frantically trying to stay alive right now. Okay, that's one half of the stack. I mean, one quarter to show, because I cut it in half. That's half. So that must be 18. 18 left, and away we go. What do we think? Paper grows on trees. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Just pick it off the tree. Mm, bit too much liquid. Be careful, Dave.
this thing about did we do this, did we do this, where's the next video, did you do a Renaissance thing, you know. I think people out there don't have any idea. Let me, let me, let me just do something for a second, I, just to maybe put that conversation to bed. Oh, hang on, let, Suicide's coming, let's do her first. Sugisan, it's Sugisan. Come and say hello. Look at this. Star printer Sugisan. Golden week, I assume a nine. Yes, 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 a
She's not having any luck finding them, so. Recap that other one. Hang on one sec. I'm trying to do too many things here. This was the excuse. This is why we are kind of busy here these days. This is the overall Mokohankan revenue since we started the Mokohankan. Not myself going before, just the Mokohankan revenue. Brag, 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 whatever. The point being, look at the last six months since Japan opened up again. Our overall revenue has, it's pretty much doubled. That's the point, and we've got the same staff. We're trying to get a couple more people on. We're trying to do this, but everybody here, we're just w producing twice as much stuff as we have done. We can't sustain this. Absolutely, we can't sustain this. So what we want is this big bump when everybody comes back to Japan suddenly, and then please settle down a bit. So where's the next video? Where's this? Where's that? Of course it's happy stuff, it's good news. So many happy people getting our prints and coming in the shop and all that kind of stuff. It's great news. But, but, but. あ、そうなんだ。あ、干してあるやつ。もう、あ、干してあるものを今日千春さんに出しますから、このものは久保田さんの。あ、そっちは久保田さん。と、あの、そうですね。あ、ごめん。あ、ごめん。あ、ごめ
We don't make the paper ourselves, we order it from one family. It's not a paper mill, it's a family who makes paper. Umbrella chats. <laughs> I don't believe that last one for one minute. <laughs> Same thing now, the paper here, because we're using selvage at both ends, this stack now as it grows is actually no longer flat. The selvage part on each side is actually a bit thicker. On any given sheet you can't feel it so much. But the, the paper has thickness in the middle, but at the edge here where the selvage is, it's actually got a bit more body and a bit more thickness. So one sheet, one sheet, one sheet, you can't feel it. But as it stacks up here now, this thing actually isn't flat anymore. It's a bit of a, a curve. The sides curve up. It's got like a bit of a, not a ski jump, but whatever. So this is thicker, this is flat, and then it's thicker. So what's happening at the end here, you probably can't see it. If I just run my brush off the end, boom, bam, it hits the curve and it dumps more liquid here. So as the stack gets up and up and up and up and up, and if I was doing like 400 sheets, this would become really curved. I would have to land carefully, go along, and then I would have to lift my brush up at the end. And we've only got, what is it, what did I say, 36 sheets here, so it's no big deal. But the real pros, the ones who do, you know, X hundred sheets at a time, it must be a major, major factor. Japanese it's mimi, ears. The English word selvage, I guess, I think that's what it is. In Japanese we call it mimi. Oh, good morning, good morning. Yuki-san, come say hello. We're, on, we're live, Rachel. Look how short she is. Oh, geez, we <laughs> we're live. This is, hey, you've seen his dreams, right? Live? Yes. <laughs> this is Yuki-san. She's here, uh, whatever, training, practicing, printing, you show. So. Training, 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 practicing training. This is your third day? Third day, yes. Third day. Yes. How would you like it so far? Uh, Ego. <coughs> English is her third language. Jenny <laughs> Hongo. Japanese is her second language. <laughs> her first language is? 
Chinese. Chinese. Yes, Chinese. <laughs> Chinese, second English, mm -hmm. sir. Japanese. 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 Okay. Yes. No problem. No problem. No problem. They're all gonna They're all gonna say hello. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yahoo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. See you later. All right. <laughs> Get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Has she met? Yeah, she's met Sugi-san. Okay. Yeah. They met the other day, so it's okay. Actually, there's something else I gotta show you then, because this is too rich. It's absolutely too rich. This is fun. This is not bragging or anything else like this. The lady actually wrote to me over a year ago, and I ignored her email. She wrote to me, and she had actually she had put in her email some pictures which I actually hadn't seen because I didn't scroll down far enough in the email. And the email was, the content was the usual content. Can I become your apprentice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it either got past the Cameron or it got past the Ionasan. I don't remember how far long ago this was. And it was just, just simply, no, we don't take apprentices. We don't take people training here. You know the situation. We've talked about this many times. Karen came here because she developed good ability at making prints and we knew she'd be able to come here and practice on her own know-how without being a drag on us and it would be a huge benefit for her. That's the only way we do this. So this, this young lady had sent me an email and I had either ignored it or we had said no. But I didn't see the images that she had put in her email. Rolled store, I think I told you a few weeks ago, she came in the shop, it would be two, three weeks ago, whatever, on a really super busy Saturday, and like, I'm, hello, and she said, I sent you an email about a year ago, and it, it didn't really all connect, but the point being, we finally did get it connected. I want to show you now one of the six images that she had included in that original email. It's going to pop up here too large. I'll have to shrink it down. So give me one sec. It's going to pop up way large. Here we go. This is a print that she made. It's going to take me a minute to shrink it down. It's a huge, huge image she sent. She made this by looking at our website, etc., etc., etc. She has no Japanese paper. She has no baron, she had no brushes, she had nothing except what she could find somewhere in the, the backwoods of China, wherever she was. It's magnificent. I mean, not compared to ours, it's not magnificent, but somebody doing this all by themselves, carving without real carving tools, printing without real printing tools, and I had skipped this. I hadn't seen it in the email because it's, I scroll down, it turns out the email was actually 70 megabytes, and there's six images. She did the Great Wave, this print, this print. So she made six reproductions of classical Japanese prints. And I haven't seen them, she hasn't actually got them with her. But when she did come in the other, the other day, <laughs> and we finally looked at this mail, and she showed it to me on her iPad, and I'm like, so we, we said instantly, of course, get over here get over here, get over here. So there, there's no visa, she's here as a tourist or something at the moment, I don't know. So just simply at the moment, she's sitting here watching. We gave her an extra bench, we gave her some paper just for practice, just for training. So at the moment, it's all for her benefit. She's just getting a chance to look and feel and touch how the paper goes, what goes on. She's just drinking, 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 look, 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 as much as she can. Are we gonna get anything out of it? I doubt that we'll be able to get her here as a printer because of visa issues. She's from a country that is just a red light for Japanese visa issues, and I doubt very much we can actually get any benefit from this as time goes by. But right now, it doesn't matter. She's a super cool kid. She really can hugely benefit from what's going on here right now, and we'll take it as it comes. Somehow, maybe if we can wangle a visa, and if she turns out to be just good enough, maybe we'll end up with one more printer in our, uh, in our team. But at the moment, I can't, uh, I can't expect that or think of that. If I don't get going, we are going to run out of time. 
Maybe she can print from abroad and mail it in. Maybe. You'd have to be a top pro. You know, if Kubota-san decided to move to Hawaii and work from there, we're cool because he knows what he's doing. He's got a lifetime of experience. Someone who doesn't have much experience, no, because there's just too many issues back and forth. You have to see what's going on. So I can't imagine a remote printer unless they are really supremely uh, experienced. So I, I don't think that's an answer. We'll see. I don't care. Whatever. At the moment, it's just here's a chance. She's here. We have a bit of space. And the benefit is just, just let's do this. You're not going to let go of Mrs. Kubota, are you? <laughs> the test print that she's been working on yesterday. She's doing the owl. But don't tell her. Everybody else thinks it's a really difficult one. We have come to the bottom of our stack. Someone's asking about Surfer Girl. It needs more carving. It needs quite a bit more carving. It's on my list of things to do. Sizing is priority for me right now. Next is tracing, and next is Hokusai printing. I have to print the Hokusai number three print. So Surfer Girl, I'm sorry, it's not going to be moving forward this week. Ah, Soka, Yuki-san, did anybody talk to you about the two kinds of water here? Yes. Okay, all right, good. So anything for the prints, ne? Anything for the print making for pigments, for moistening paper, for making size, always from this one, for washing out bits, this one. Okay, thank okay. you, good. Thank you. <laughs> Dosa desu ne, so. Dosa. That's next. Well, so far, I've been doing dosa for everybody, but the next step is the printers are going to do their own dosa starting this spring. Mm. So soon, we're going to start practicing together with them. And I, I guess that includes you, I suppose. I do this. Yeah. But at the moment, up to now, it's only been me. But starting starting soon now, all the printers will be doing this. So. Mm -hmm. so hard. No, it's easy actually. It's, <laughs> it's easy, easy. Not easy, but it's okay. It's not. I'm sure you can handle this.
someone's marking soon as TM trademark. That goes back quite a ways, you know. Where would I remember that from? I'm going to guess here. Byte Magazine. We're talking 1979, 1980, 1981, somewhere around there. An early computer magazine called Byte Magazine. And if I'm remembering this half correctly, there was a columnist there called Jerry Purnell. I think he used to do reviews and stuff of software and all that kind of stuff and things that were coming up. And he had that trademark phrase, soon, or maybe he said, real soon now. He's talking about some company that had announced a product ready for coming down. And that was his gag. It's real soon now, trademark. I think, if I, that's what I'm remembering. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. <laughs> could, could be wrong. <laughs> Would be, should be, is wrong. I can't remember what date is, and I can remember something stupid. Is it real soon now? Is that what it was, or am I misremembering? I don't know. <laughs> I also remember. <laughs> I knew this would happen, actually, too. I knew, I knew absolutely when I did this in 1986, when I packed up my goods in Canada, moved to Japan in 1986, I had been working on computers for a long, long time, since the late 70s, and I had been buying every computer magazine that was ever made. I bought Creative Computing, Byte, all the Mac stuff, whatever, from 1978, 980, whenever they started. And when I moved to Japan in 1986, we had to do something about stuff. We came with just a little tiny suitcase. So I remember I got somebody, somebody from the music shop where I had used to work. We brought the green van over from the music shop, and we took my computer magazines shelf after shelf after shelf after shelf after shelf of computer magazines. Creative computing, issue number one, all the way through. And I knew that 30, 40, 50, 60 years from now, from then, I would be telling this story about how we took them to the dumpster. I had no choice. They were useless to me. The, the knowledge had been gleaned there was nothing else to do. They had to go to the dumpster. There was just no other way around it. Well, you can yell at me all you want, but I knew I would get yelled at in the future, but I had no choice. There was simply no place. I had to look forward, get going, move on to a new life across the ocean. I could not sit on a stack of old magazines. There was just no way around it. My parents weren't there to put it in their basement. There was just no other option. Yeah, they were big. Byte magazine was a real fat thing to show. The only ones I kept, <laughs> if you've seen some of them, the only ones I kept were magazines that had my story, one of the stories I had contributed. I was a contribute to, contributor to Commodore magazine back then. So I kept those on a, on a, in a box. How's our time? Coming up to 9 o'clock on a Saturday, on a Thursday. C64, no, it's before that time. C64 was after my Commodore time. I'm back in the CBM era, Commodore Business Machines. I never had a C64. That was gaming and stuff. I had a CBM 8032.
with the 8050 double floppy drive, double sided disks, double drive, double sided disks. We're doing well here. This is going well. TRS 80. No, I never had a Radio Shack, I never had a Tandy. Go directly to X. Is that me? Yes, that's one of the stories. I think we've shown these before on the stream, so maybe somebody has, uh, has saved it somewhere. Yeah, what did I have? I, there was three or four. Go to X, Y. It was trying, because the, the machine had no way to locate the cursor. Then I wrote one called Rainbow Backup, which was a modification of the, of the grandfather backup system. What was the third one? They were fun, fun, fun. Paid next to nothing, but it doesn't matter. It was just for fun. They're busy down there. Tuck, 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 you're supposed to watch fairly quietly, but of course, Sugisan wants to explain things. So her work, it's like me today here, trying to do the work and talk about the work at the same time. And that might be a bit of a bother for Sugisan today, so we'll see. Well, the backup store, I didn't invent backups for God's sake. I had been bitten in the early days of using computers. I was careless and I had, you know, drive failure. I lost a ton of stuff. So, of course, early, early, early on, I became a convert to real strong backups. And we were using our system for business. We were running a major business over there in Canada. And we were also worried about off site backups. So, I developed what I called rainbow backup. It was three colors that went round, and as each one came round to the red, a copy went off-site, new floppy disks came in, and as each one went round, it went off-site, replaced by new disks. So the, the system worked for two purposes. It kept off-site backup as well as on-site backup, and it meant no, no single group of floppy disks got overused. It cost us in floppies, but that didn't matter. It was a multi-million dollar software system. I mean, running multi-million dollars worth of business. Way bigger than Mocha Hunk on here now. We ran the CBM 8032 for, I guess, two years, three years. I don't remember exactly. And then IBM came out with something called the IBM AT. And we jumped on that because that was available with a hard drive, a 10 megabyte hard drive. I shit bricks, 10 megabyte hard drive, oh my god, and it had a tape backup. So that's when the Commodore 8032 got sent out to pasture. We couldn't believe it, and I thought, how am I ever going to use all this space? <laughs> a 10 megabyte hard drive. It was big too, my god, it was big. It sat in its own unit at the side of the desk on the floor. It sat, it looked like maybe like a, a drive, like a, like a VCR unit. And it sat like this vertically at the floor at the side. And inside it, there was a 10 megabyte hard drive. 
and the, all the staff had to come, don't bang this thing, don't touch it. It was protected by some, a, a little fence so nobody could knock it over. And we backed it up to streaming tape. Sorry, we've had these conversations before, just it's the old, old folks conversation, sorry. How's our time? 9.01. If I start to rush now, we're going to get in trouble, so take it easy, Dave. <laughs> Showing pictures, Yuki san is showing her something on the screen. So, The other thing I remember too, when we moved to the IBM AT, it had it had their IBM Business Basic or something. I forget what was inside it, and it was a rel revelation for us because it had subroutines, and you know, like functions that actually returned values. The Commodore system, you could write subroutines, go sub something, go sub 250, and it would return, but it didn't return values. So it was chaos, absolute chaos. You had to poke something into memory somewhere, return to where you were, and then go and read that little value that you had hidden somewhere. It was really good fun. Boomers booming. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Did I start this conversation? Sorry, I shouldn't have started that. I don't know how we got started on that. I don't know. That corner is the one I do worse on. Now. You're talking about this corner, that's nothing. This is the corner I consistently miss, you know.
We have actually a decent show and tell prepared today, but 9.07 now, it is not looking you know, positive for a show and tell. But I can tell you, we have actually a good one. It's nothing to do with socks blowing off. It's a quiet show and tell, but it's actually quite a meaningful one. What I did today is I prepared a small show and tell based on a question that I get asked in the shop all the time. There's no point talking about it too much now because we're probably not going to have time for it today. Um, but I will hold on to this and repeat it. So the next stream on Saturday or something, it's a show and tell that I can show you downstairs as well as upstairs. So it will be a, a nice, it'll be a more of a, not a lecture, that's the wrong word, an explanation of something that we're doing here in the shop that many, many people ask. Actually, I can, I can, you know, whatever, tease it and talk about it. Now, people will look at a particular group of prints in the shop. Maybe they will look at some landscapes, one or two or three of them. They'll be browsing through. And they might even find the same image, because we've got, you know, a mix of different stuff down there in our flea market section. And maybe they'll find a Tokaido print for 6,000 yen or something. And they'll find the same Tokaido print, and it'll say 9,000 yen. And people will ask us, is this a mistake? How can the same product have two different prices? And we will explain that these are these are used items. This is an old print. One of them might be pre-war, one might be post-war, blah, 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 blah. And there's lots of different things that will affect the price. So I thought what I would do this time, I've brought up a bunch of samples. slight problem. I'm not sure who can identify this. We're not going to lose the stack, but there is a problem with this, with today's, today's session. We're not going to lose anything. I'll be okay with this, but there is a problem with this. I said at the beginning that these are larger sheets of paper and that I cut them in half ready for sizing here. I did it in the last couple of minutes, very, very quickly, before the stream started. And someone says, who cut it crooked? Who indeed? Who indeed? we're going to make from this are 14 centimeters wide. So there'll be four prints made from this. 14 centimeters and 28, 14 centimeters. So I think we are okay, but my God, we are cutting it close. We are cutting it close. Here we're okay. We have more than one centimeter. Lots of room, but here we are very, very, very close. If I had really screwed up more badly, if I had cut the thing so crooked that we didn't have enough room for two prints here, there's still actually no disaster. We have lots and lots of different prints here at different dimensions. Plan A would be cut my 14 off from here 
and use this part for one of the prints that just needs 12 centimeters in width. So we would just put some of this aside. I would get some more paper, do another batch of sizing for Kabodasan, and put that paper aside until such a job came up next week or next month when we needed a narrower paper. So nothing would be thrown away, nothing would be lost here. It's just simply it would waste my time, but we're okay. And I think it looks like I might be getting away with it because we've got our 28, 14 times 2. But yeah, not good, not good. If you're going to screw up, do it in public. Now, how's the camera view? Is it better this way? When I do the sizing next time, should I go back to the previous camera view, or is this one better? Give me a bit of feedback on it. I think probably this is better. Can you see the actual stroke better, or did you want the camera off to one side? I don't know. But we should keep mixing it up so there's always different views. Can you actually see what's going on here? I think so. Here's the last cheat. brushes in the hot water. I can't leave it there. But if I just get it good and hot and wet, and when I leave it here now temporarily while we go and hang, it will be okay. There is still lots of glue. I will be washing it more before I hang it up. But I don't want to leave it in the hot water right now, and I don't want to take the time to wash it right now. We have to move on. So just simply, I've rinsed, 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 rinsed with hot water. It'll hold it for a, way, for a while there. It's just temporarily rinsed for a minute. Okay, it's moving time. You guys can explain to the newbies here what's going to happen. I will just get busy and do this. And I figured out also, we've been losing audio while I do this, but if I pop up the internal laptop audio, then I think the audio should stay as we do our move. Okay, we're gonna lose the small camera on the side. It is history. I'm gonna move the power.
Okay, I'll have to do this in two stages. I'll move the camera, no, I'll move the computer, no, I'll move the camera first. So the main camera is gonna come down here, it's gonna come out. Okay, last step, the computer itself. Here we go, this should be easy. Everything else is already switched over. Uh, do we have audio? If I take the chat, I'm probably going to uh, chat settings. Uh, where are we, chat appearance. Top size, okay. Camera is back in. Do we have audio? Internal camera, where do I put this? I put this down here out of the way, right? I can't remember where that goes. Okay, for those of you who are new here, the idea is this. We have a paper, we have hooks up at the top. And the paper is going to be hung up two by two. Cable. Okay, it's 9.21, obviously, clearly now today there is not going to be time for a show and tell. It's going to take me 10 minutes or so at least to hang this up. So for those of you who are hanging around waiting to see beautiful prints, that's not going to happen today. Okay, 
It's okay, work is a priority here, so. And clearly now we can see these sheets are not lining up at all. I did have an angled cut when I cut these in half before starting. Now that I'm flipping them over, you can see I clearly obviously had the wrong angle when I cut the paper in half. <coughs> it looks like I was off. I had my I had my board and then I guess I had my ruler one centimeter tipped. I completely screwed up. The paper will be usable either for this job or another job. It doesn't matter, but it might mean I have to do more sizing this afternoon to make up for the sheets that may not be wide enough. So it's actually about the dimensions here. When I'm talking about the paper lengths, we're talking about the finished print. This finished print is going to be 14 centimeters by 22 centimeters. <clears throat> so when I'm cutting the paper to prepare it before this, I'm cutting a sheet of dry paper and I know I'm going to need 14 centimeters, so I cut wider than 2 to 28 centimeters. As we're doing the sizing, the paper will expand. As the printers are doing the printing, they moisten the paper, the paper expands. It prints on the blocks. As they dry it, it shrinks. So the paper that we, the block size doesn't match the finished print size. It's actually complex and I'm, I shouldn't just stand here on the fly and try and explain to you. That would be a good topic actually for the show and tell session one day to talk about that because it's actually a major, major, major factor with our work. Because we print on moist paper that is expanded, the prints never match, the finished prints never match the block size. It is a super confusing point. 
for me at this preparation stage, there's no confusion. I know in advance what the finished target size is and that's what I cut my paper to match. What happens as the printers get to it is of no consequence to me at this stage. Although of course it's vitally important to them as they're doing their work. Block size doesn't match the print size. And that has real ramifications for the people who are making reproductions. You got this, right? The person who originally made any print, it's, it's X. You cut the blocks X size. As you make your paper, you expand your paper, you print it, you dry your paper. The finished print is always X minus some factor, the finished print. Okay, if you're a reproduction company, you come along, oh, there's a nice print, we're gonna make a copy of this. If you then take that finished print as your master and use trace and something and make a set of blocks for it, the new blocks are going to be X minus something from the original blocks. And if you then did this in Edo and somebody in Taisho of Meiji made a copy and somebody in Showa made a copy, you could, if you're not thinking about this, if you're not careful, you could find yourself going down, down, down in size. So when we're making a reproduction of a print, and for example, when I did my Great Wave, I had the uh, information from the Metropolitan, the print is X by X. I could not make my tracing at that same size. It's complicated. So somebody's got it. The match label prints over generations were originally large size. They came down to match labels. I don't, I don't think that's exactly how it happened, but yes. So, but it's a thing. It's a factor if you're in the business of making reproductions or even original prints. If you're trying to make a print of a certain size for the wall, your block has to be larger. Someone's talking about this too, how much have the fibers shrunk and stuff. This is a big deal that varies from sh not sheet to sheet but it will vary from paper type to paper type, and it varies differently according to the grain of the paper. This is actually a super complicated point. The paper we're dealing with here, as I've been sizing it, which is with mostly water, it has expanded this way. If we were looking at the finished big sheet, it expands against the grain. It's like a tree, a piece of wood. It will, it will expand widthwise. It won't expand at all, stretch at all, lengthwise. A piece of wood cut from a tree. The length won't change, the width will. And at, that's as it is with the paper. So if you have a, if you wanted to make your print 10 by 10 as a finished print, Depending on the paper you're using, it might be 10.2 by 10, or 10.2 by 10.1. Or if you're using terrible paper, 10.3 by 10.4. I can't see the questions. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Someone's talking about an interesting stream, and you're all sitting there watching paper dry. <laughs> Classic. It can't get any more boring than this, on today, actually. 
What did you do this morning? I watched some paper dry. Okay, heads up. Now today is Thursday. I can give you some heads up slash tease about what's coming up. I am about to become a printer again. Today is Thursday. We have to rip, we have to do some more copies of the second print in the Hokusai series. We left the subscriptions open for quite a while. Uh, I understand tells me that we're short some prints. New people have signed up. So over the weekend, Dave is going to be a printer. I will be printing some of the Hokusai prints. The second one, you've never seen me print that one. I have never printed it yet. I've only ever done the first one. So this is Thursday, Saturday morning's stream. If all goes well, I will be at Day chance bench on the right hand corner in the room there and I will be printing. So that's Saturday morning coming up. Unless something else comes in to change the plan. I will be a printer next Saturday and possibly right through until Monday. I say possibly, almost certainly, because I would be also busy in the shop on the weekend because we're really short staffed. So that's the way it's going to go. There's, of course, no show and tell here today. No show and tell, I'm sorry. As I said, we've got a good one coming up. We'll talk about that on Saturday. I can't see the questions, can't see what's going on. Thank you very much for hanging in with us here. It's kind of chaos here these days. Tell you what, to close off, let's open the door and peek what's happening in the next room. Ha <laughs> あ、最後。まだまだライブですが。まだまだもうこれからしまります。さようなら。次のネクストルーム。すぐさんにいいもフォーカスちょっと待ってください。あ、フォーカスするとあの顔若さが。見えますか。Okay, we are out of here. Thank you very much, gang. See you later. See you Monday morning, no, Saturday morning at the printing bench. Thank you very much.